Hello folks, uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Cursed Cathedral bases that are designed for Conquest by Elric Hobbies. I'm doing a quick little paint job uh, to paint these up. Going for some some more vibrant colours here. Uh, we're starting with a burnt orange. It's actually quite a vivid orange really. Uh, it shows up pretty well on camera. But we're going to knock back its intensity a little bit by thinning it down. That helps it flow into the textured surface that we have on this base. Uh, very similar to the method I've been using for a lot of the other bases that I've been painting up in this series. Uh, do check out some of my other recent videos if you want to see some of those. We're going to just do a nice little coverage of the uh, whole base here. Uh, give ourselves some uh, good base coverage to work off of. I absolutely love these bases. I've uh, used them, uh, not the Conquest versions, but the uh, standard uh, round base versions for a huge commission that I've done in the past for a client doing a Sisters of Battle Army. They look absolutely fantastic. There's a ton of detail there that you can really work with and uh, build up and add a ton of uh, atmosphere to your models. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we start painting up the candles and some of the options that you have there and what I did in this case versus uh, what you can you can choose to do if you if you really want to, to go crazy with them. Because we've got so much uh, water mixed into this paint, it's actually going to dry relatively slowly. And that's something that I, I like to have when I'm painting bases like this. Uh, the texture helps ensure that the paint doesn't just run and flow everywhere. But having that extra moisture allows me to do very, very easy wet blending. And that's what we're going to do next with some of the Pro Acryl Green, giving a little bit of visual interest, a little bit of contrast, we're going to introduce some of this pure green and just gently blend it into that burnt orange that we started with. Obviously the more you blend it in, the more it desaturates their kind of uh, contrasting colours, so it's going to push everything back towards a, a grey in between them as we work them in. Uh, again, Going for a light dark uh, contrast this time, we're introducing heavily thinned down coal black. I'm focusing on the center of each of the bases where there's going to be a person standing eventually for a rough approximation of a cast shadow from that person kind of standing over the base. And uh, I'll also add in a little bit of the, the black into some of the other areas. Again, just to give a little bit of variance variety to to the basic.
we'll crack out the warm gray next and this is going to give us our base coat on the stone slabs stone tiles that are on this base now i rushed this a little bit it would have probably been better to dry off the base before i approach this you'll see in some areas that i blend a little bit but that's actually not a bad thing it gives the sense that the dirt is kind of encroaching on those slabs dust tends to bleed over um, having completely clean areas and, and a sharp contrast is never going to look right in a on a natural style of base you want to have everything blend at the edges have that soft transition everywhere because that's what the real world tends to be like even if you think of a building standing on the ground if you look at the bottom part of that building you'll often see accumulation of dirt maybe mud splatters grass growing out from from that edging where the uh, the ground is fairly well shielded so everything is always going to have a little bit of blend a little bit of transition there from one one entity to the next and the better we can do at approximating that on our bases the the more realistic the the finished result is going to be for those of you that have seen the uh, conquest imperial walkway base tutorial that i did uh, the technique I'm using here to paint uh, the, the raised areas of the stone without hitting the recesses will be familiar. I kind of talk through my approach with that in, in that video. So if you haven't seen it, check it out and that will show you how I'm able to kind of just quickly pass over these areas and only really be painting the, the, the upper raised surfaces. Now at this stage you'll still be seeing some black patches on the base. Uh, the majority of those are actually the candles uh, that this base has, uh, which are one of the things that I think make these, these bases look so great. Um, they're a little hard to see when you've got a completely top-down uh, angle for the camera like this, but you, you will see them more as I uh, paint them up and, and pick the base up to, to get different angles on it. So uh, that's why I've not completely covered the, the base in a base coat like I normally would do, is those are, are really a different entity. Speaking of which, we've got the yellow ochre next. So we're going to start with a light dry brush. This is exactly the same process that I used in the uh, Celtic Ruins base video, which is maybe before this maybe after this i can't remember the exact order i was planning on putting these out um, and that may well change three or four times before this goes out um, a very light dry brush just to uh, hit those raised parts of the dirt in particular but again you know nature is messy don't worry if you kind of bleeds over onto the stone slabs a little bit we're going to be adding other highlights to those areas in any case, so it's all going to blend out in the end. Those uh, long planks are, are actually sculpted wooden planks, and I'm doing something a little bit different with those. So they've remained black. They've now got a dry brush of yellow ochre, and uh, will give them a little bit more lift in a second but first we're going to paint up these candles uh, starting with just a light dry brush just to pick them out a little bit hopefully it makes it easier to see what they are now um, and then really giving them dimension and volume I'm going for a little bit of a stylistic approach here so I'm not worried about fully painting these those recesses that are super dark and super black are actually going to look pretty reasonable by the time we're, we're done with this process so don't worry too much that you know the candles are not fully painted this is uh, something that i actually use quite a lot in my painting to just help make things go by quicker if you just leave those areas that you don't really see that aren't really raised black uh, you're not painting them and you don't have to then go back in and shade them down uh, it it is it does give a very particular look to the models. Uh, some people like it, some people don't like it. 
Um, but for me, it's it's just a lot quicker, and, and that's I think the main reason that I use it. I'm also taking this opportunity to do a quick dry brush over, particularly the stone slabs, uh, just to help weather them up a bit, give them a little bit more definition away from uh, the yellow ochre highlights of the earth. So it's now on to uh, my favorite part of basing generally, which is introducing some weathering pigments. Uh, this time we're using dark earth and ancient earth. Um, dark earth is quite a reddy brown, almost purpley in color. Um, and then ancient earth has got a much greener texture to it. Gives a really good vibe for kind of mossy walls and mossy stone. So these will, again, just, you know, give a little bit more variance to the model, a little bit more uh, visual interest, which is what we're always striving for when we're uh, trying to pick out these, uh, these little bits and pieces. So this ancient earth is actually quite a pallid color when you put it on the surface, but uh, it blends nicely, it works well with the stone, uh, and just gives, gives us something else to work with. Lastly, we're going for that um, brighter grey again. We're uh, just putting this back over the candles, help pick them out a little bit more. With this done, you've really got completed bases. Uh, you could, you know, just call it here, do that base rim, uh, and and move on. I noticed that in this particular case, a couple of the candles had sculpted flames on them. Uh, that's not true for all of the bases, but it is for these ones. And so I really wanted to make sure that that was picked out slightly. Um, I didn't want to go full blown OSL with these. I didn't want to go too crazy, partly because I'd have needed to make sure that I was matching that glow effect on, on all of the models around it, but also because I didn't want to darken down this base as much as that would require. Candles like these don't throw out strong light. If you really want that light to kind of really powerfully glow, you're going to have to make all of the surrounds very, very dark. So instead, I took a little bit of burnt orange, uh, thinned it out a bit, painted up the flame itself, and then just with thinned burnt orange, painted just that very, very immediate vicinity, just to really give the impression that the candle is lit. Um, even this is probably more exaggerated than you would really get from a candle in you know, decent daylight. But I think it works well enough to sell the effect without being completely overblown. Now this is where I managed to get my head and camera repeatedly, um, just using a brush that was bigger than I should be using to paint up those wicks. Um, all of these candles have been burnt, and whenever you burn a candle and you snuff it out, that wick uh, remains black, it's not the, the unburnt white look. So I made sure to go in and, and just put a little dot of black on every wick that might have caught some of the dry brushing and the highlighting that we've done. I also used a little bit of this black thinned out slightly to uh, reinforce some of the shadows around wooden planks, around paving slabs, etc. Um, again, thinning this out is, is very important for giving you that kind of blend and not making this too harsh. I'm also not being entirely uniform in what I'm shading. I'm just doing patches here and there. Um, for those of you that, that did watch that Imperial Walkway basing video, you'll note that I did something similar when I was picking out some of the, the brickwork to be a brighter color. It's all kind of in that same vein of that natural variance that you tend to get in the real world. Things aren't completely consistent. You don't want every piece of this executed to the same extent, to the same you know, extreme. At this point, it's time for that victory lap basing 
is always completed by uh, doing a nice little base room. Well, nearly always completed by doing a nice little base room. Uh, I am an advocate of just a nice flat black base room. Um, I don't have any particular objection to other things. I've done Steel Legion Drab on occasion, but um, my go-to is black, and in this case it's it's just more of the Pro Acryl Coal Black, which uh, is, does a great job for this. Once you've done all of that, it is a finished base. It just needs the models mounted onto it, and you are all set. So I would like to thank you all so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something, maybe it was interesting. Uh, please let me know what you thought of it, like, dislike, whatever it is in the comments below. Um, that will help me improve my videos in the future and help more people see these videos, as would subscribing to my channel, liking this video, you know, hitting that bell notification for when I drop future videos, including possibly more in, in this series and uh, some more beyond that. I've got a uh, couple of review videos coming up soon, so please do stay tuned and uh, in the meantime, thank you all for watching in later days.